Hi, I'm John, and this is NASA Now. If you live in an area where earthquakes are common or are expected, then it's a very good idea to have a plan. Earthquakes, they happen every day all around the world. So why is NASA interested in earthquakes? And how will the research happening today allow scientists to get a snapshot of the future? That's ahead, but first, Here's what's happening at NASA now. When NASA launches the multi-billion dollar Curiosity rover towards Mars in November, it'll make a beeline for the floor of a large crater known as Gale that geologists say once brimmed with liquid water. Gale Crater is about 154 kilometers, 96 miles, in diameter located near the planet's equator. This area is believed to have formed somewhere in the range of 3.5 to 3.8 billion years ago. At the center of the crater is a 5 kilometer, 3 mile high mountain that contains hundreds of fine layers and grades of rocks and sand. Such a sequence of rocks, called a stratigraphic section, is a treasure trove of information for geologists. Now, let's take a look at the past. Plate tectonic theory had its beginnings in 1915 when Alfred Wegener proposed his theory of continental drift. Wegener proposed that a single supercontinent, which he called Pangaea, fragmented late in the Triassic period and that those fragments began to move away from one another. This would explain why the outlines of many coastlines like South America and Africa appear to fit together like a puzzle. Recently, Japan had a major earthquake that caused a massive amount of destruction. The earthquake also created a tidal wave known as a tsunami that wiped out entire towns and villages along the coast of Japan. To help us understand the earth mechanics of what happened is Greg Leisinger, geophysicist at the NASA Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California. Hi Greg, why does the surface of the earth look the way it does? Well, uh, the Earth is a sort of a unique planet in the solar system in that it does have a very active geology. And so what we know is that the Earth is a, an evolving planet, a planet that uh, has activity in its interior and on its surface. And that manifests itself in the movement of plates and in things like earthquakes and volcanoes. What happens with the Earth that causes one of these events? Think about trying to slide a cardboard box across the floor. If the floor is very polished and very slippery, you can just push on the box and it'll slide. But if it's rough, if there's a little bit of friction, then you might have to push on that box for a while before it starts to move. And that friction is the kind of friction that occurs between plates on the Earth's surface or near the Earth's surface. So instead of the plates moving smoothly past one another, they stick and jerk and jump. And those jumps or those sudden movements are what we perceive as earthquakes. How many types of earthquakes are there? Well, I, I suppose that's a little bit like asking how many different types of snowflakes there are because uh, in some ways every earthquake is different. But there are certain kinds of earthquakes. There are earthquakes that involve horizontal movement. Uh, geologists refer to those as strike-slip earthquakes, where the movement is parallel to the Earth's surface. But there are also earthquakes that involve vertical movement. Those would be referred to as dip-slip earthquakes, where the movement is up and down. Or at angles, you can have a combination of the two, which would be called oblique slip. Is it possible to predict earthquakes? Detecting earthquakes and predicting earthquakes are two different things. When the earthquake occurs, the shaking happens and waves travel out throughout the earth, just like when you throw a rock into a pond and the ripples spread out. Predicting an earthquake is a much more difficult thing to do because in order to predict an earthquake, you'd have to know just exactly when the rocks were just about to slip 
were just about to break. Do earthquakes happen on other planets? We do think that they do occur on other planets. Venus is perhaps the world in the solar system that's the most like the Earth geologically. And so since we see volcanic uh, activity on Venus, it's probably pretty reasonable to expect that there would be quakes on Venus as well. Is there a way to simulate an earthquake? My colleagues that I work with here at JPL on the Quake Sim project are very interested in trying to understand more about how earthquakes work. And uh, what we try to do is use computers to simulate that process as accurately as we can. If we can simulate how earthquakes work in a computer, we wouldn't have to wait hundreds or thousands of years for the earthquakes to actually occur. Did you know that volcanoes can form anywhere, whether it's underwater or on land? The Pacific Ocean region contains many active volcanoes that form what we call the Ring of Fire. The Ring is an example of plate boundary volcanoes, including Mount St. Helens. Now you know. Hey students, Earth Science Week is just around the corner and we've got a great way for you to get involved. As part of the Earth Science Week celebration, you can enter any one of the contests available, including photography, visual arts, and writing. For more information, visit the NASA Explorer School's virtual campus. Well, that's it for NASA Now. Tune in next time when we find out how Curiosity is driving the next phase of exploration on Mars. See you then on NASA Now. NASA Now comes to you from the virtual campus at NASA Explorer Schools. <laughs>